So today we're getting started with a fun little tumbler. I've already prepped the base of my tumbler, spray painted it, a flat mat, and now we are going to apply our glitter with the resin method. As always, I am using Counterculture Artist Resin, and I'm gonna spread this resin evenly all around the tumbler. The tumbler size is a 20 ounce skinny, so we're gonna just go ahead and apply a nice amount of resin because I am going in with chunky glitter this time. So I want enough resin on the tumbler to be able to grab a hold onto that chunky glitter. So here you can see I am putting my glitter in these little medicine cups. I'm gonna have them listed down below in the description. We are doing a huge restock on a lot of our colors, including all of our color shifts. So in the video, I'm using six different colors. Um, on this tumbler, but in total we're gonna have 16 color shift glitters back in stock very very soon Like I mentioned in my previous video stay tuned for that announcement If you want to go ahead and follow me on Instagram join my Facebook group That is the best way to be notified whenever you want any updates or information on our glitter and restocks and all products so yeah, you can see I separated that into six different medicine cups and I'm gonna just start scattering all the different colors on the tumbler just randomly. There isn't any pattern or anything that I'm trying to achieve. I just wanted to have the different color shifts all around this tumbler. So um, that's what I'm gonna be doing here. And you can use any color you want. This doesn't have to be done with color shift glitter. Um, I like the way it looks on these types of tumblers, but you can always use um, any color you want for the base of your tumbler. Again, we're gonna be working on a peekaboo tumbler, so I wanted the shifts underneath to be really fun and vibrant, and so that's why I decided to go in with the color shift glitters, but you can choose any colors you want. I am just having fun with the placement of the glitters, and again, you can scatter them and place them wherever you want, however you want. No rhyme or reason or specific pattern that I'm going for right now. So now that I got my glitter laid down completely, I'm going to just take my hand right now and flatten all the glitter down. Now, usually I use a parchment paper whenever I have really chunky glitter and I want it to get it completely flat. I'll wrap the tumbler in parchment paper and roll it and squeeze it down so that it's completely flat. But I did want to have dimension underneath the peekaboo. So I'm just using my fingers to kind of really push down those bigger pieces but also still allowing a little bit of check texture to show through. So you can see that I'm just gently patting down my glitter, making sure that all those big pieces are completely fat. Once your resin is completely cured, you do wanna go in with about two, maybe even three coats of resin on top of this glitter to make sure that your resin layer is super, super smooth. Keep in mind that we are going to be spray painting over the glitter and the spray paint will show any imperfections or bumps or waves or anything that you have um, uneven on the base of your tumbler. So yeah, you wanna make sure that your resin layer is nice and smooth before applying your vinyl and going in with your spray paint. So just gonna continue to show the process. I do take my time. You can see that I'm just patting down that glitter. I'm not rushing, just taking my time, making sure that the rim is cleaned off. And once you have a nice, even smooth surface, we're gonna move on to apply our vinyl decals. Now the vinyl decals I purchased on Etsy from a small shop. I will be sure to list that shop down below if you wanna check her out. 
And once I've cut out the vinyl on a um, non-adhesive, like a non-permanent adhesive vinyl, I just apply that all around the entire tumbler wherever I want the design to be. The pieces of vinyl that you're laying down on the tumbler is where the glitter is going to be exposed. So you want to make sure that wherever you're putting your vinyl is where you want that glitter to show through. So once you've laid down all your vinyl pieces, now we can go ahead and start spray painting. This particular tumbler is going to be done with two different colors. And the first layer I'm putting down is a black spray paint. This is the same spray paint that I use to prep the base of the tumbler. So the layer that's under the glitter, it's just a matte black spray paint. I'm going to apply a nice even coat as my first spray paint layer all over the vinyl. And then I am going to let that dry um, about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna go in with the second coat of spray paint, which is going to be a flat white spray paint. You can see now that I'm going to spray a nice generous amount over that black. I don't want any of the black really to see, to show through that much. Again, we are going to distress this tumbler and peel up that vinyl anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I like for none of the black to show through until after I distress my tumbler. So keep that in mind. Uh, all tumblers are different. They're all not gonna look exactly the same. So you can use your um, individuality in this part and kind of go with whatever you want you can even do different colors underneath you can put blue um, spray paint red whatever you want underneath it doesn't have to be exactly like mine have fun with it once those two layers of spray paint is completely dry and I think I left it overnight until the next day just to make sure that it was completely dry again we did go in with two coats of spray paint so I wanted to make sure it was completely dry before peeling up my vinyl now I'm going to go in with my weeding tool um, and carefully peel up all the vinyl pieces that I laid down onto the tumbler. For this part, you want to take your time because if your hand was to slip, then you could puncture through the spray paint. Again, we're going to be distressing this tumbler anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But just in case you want to take your time and be really careful when you're using your sharp tool to peel up your vinyl a little trick is to peel the vinyl like use your little tool towards the vinyl design and not away from the vinyl design that way if your hand does slip you end up skidding on the vinyl and not on the actual tumbler itself so I'm just going to show you guys how I carefully peel up these little vinyl pieces I'm going to um, speed through some of the process here and then show you guys what the tumbler looks like when all of the vinyl is pulled up. Okay, so this is what your tumbler should look like right after you've peeled up your vinyl design. You can see how clean it looks, how crisp it looks, and how pretty the glitter looks underneath. Now we're gonna start distressing our tumbler. I'm gonna be using this acetone, 100% acetone that I got from Walmart at the nail section. I'm gonna be finishing off this bottle before opening up my industrial grade acetone from Lowe's, but this actually works pretty fine anyway, so if you can only get the nail acetone, then don't worry about it, you'll be just fine. What you wanna do now is start to gently rub away on the spray paint. You can decide where you want to distress your tumbler. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly where I'm putting it or how I'm doing it. You can kinda work with the design and place it wherever you want. I like to rub upwards and not go back and forth, back and forth. So you can see that I'm just rubbing away in one direction. So I'm kind of just moving up along the tumbler while removing that spray paint. So you'll start to notice that as I'm removing away the spray paint, 
some of the black spray paint from underneath starts creating um, like little dirty marks on top of the white. Now, when it comes to this type of design, this motherhood tumbler, I actually like my tumblers to look a little bit dirty and I'm not particularly um, picky or careful about how dirty my tumbler looks. However, I do go in with some alcohol to clean up around where I am distressing just a little bit and you'll notice that as we move along. But again, towards the ending of the design, I actually go in and like to make uh, make it look like it's worn, it's dirty. This is, motherhood is a walk in the park. You can see the design, so I really do want it to look a little bit grungy and dirty. Um, again, this is up to the individual on how you want your finished piece to look. So you can see here just what I'm talking about as the black spray paint starts coming up above the white spray paint. And so now is when I'm taking my rag and I've sprayed it with 91% alcohol and I'm trying to wipe some of that um, black spray paint away. Now I don't want the tumbler to come out completely black so that's the reason why I'm wiping some of it away. But again, you'll notice as we move along um, in the design of this tumbler, I do go in and kind of dirty it up again. So I'm just cleaning it off so it doesn't get out of control. Um, but I do like some of that black to stay on the tumbler, like I said before. So I'm going to fast forward through this part just a little bit. Um, and you can see how I go about distressing the tumbler. So here I'm spraying some more of that 91% alcohol on my rag just to clean up more of that distressed area. Also, you want to make sure that you're cleaning off your resin um, underneath so that it is completely shiny and it doesn't have any scuff marks or any spray paint because if you don't get it off, um, that's going to be foggy underneath your resin. Also, one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of the tutorial is that before you spray paint your tumbler, you do not want to sand down your tumbler. So that's why I'm saying you want to make sure that your resin is completely smooth or as smooth as it's going to be before you spray paint it. Because you do not want to sand your tumbler before going in with the spray paint. You're probably going to want to apply one to two coats of resin on top of the glitter sand and then apply another final coat which will be the third coat of resin and then spray paint if you happen to sand your tumbler before spray painting and you go into this part to distress that spray paint is going to be is going to get stuck inside of those sanding lines and it's going to look foggy and you won't be able to remove that so that is one very important step before you go into spray painting that you want to keep in mind. Do not sand before spray painting if you're going to be distressing your cup. All right, so now that that important piece of information is out there, um, here I am just continuing to distress my cup. You can see I'm going in. Right now the video is sped up a little bit faster, so it looks like I'm going really hard and, and fast, but I'm really not and taking my time. And I'm just kind of moving slow and move and going in between the acetone and the alcohol to clean off the area. So first I go in with the acetone to distress and then I go in with the alcohol to clean around and then I move on to the next step. I'm also going to distress the bottom rim of the tumbler and the top rim of the tumbler. I like the way that looks. And it's personal preference, you don't have to, but I like how it shows the peekaboo like right at the rims. So I, so that's what I'm doing right now, just taking my acetone and distressing some of the rim on the bottom and also on the top. For the top rim of the tumbler, I'm going to make some of that those distressed areas going down towards the tumbler. 
while the other parts of the rim I'm going to just kind of clean it off a little bit so you can see what I mean by some of the areas like here I'm just rubbing it across and then some of them I move it down a little bit so it kind of looks like it's burning away or like distressing away from the rim One thing I noticed that I do a lot looking at this video now is that I kind of tend to go back and forth between the base of the tumbler, the bottom of the tumbler, and the top of the tumbler. As, as I'm creating my design and as I'm um, distressing the tumbler, I'm actually thinking about how I want it to look in that moment. So I'm using my rag to distress areas away and as I'm looking at the tumbler, that's when I decide, okay, I think I'm gonna go um, and distress this area. This area looks like it could use a little bit of distressing and as I'm distressing away the tumbler, that's kind of like where I'm deciding um, what the tumbler is going to look like. So a lot of the decisions that I make while creating tumblers are actually done in that moment of when I'm doing it. So um, that's something you want to keep in mind too. And like I said, no two tumblers are going to look exactly alike. So while I'm creating this tumbler for a customer, the next customer that orders this tumbler, it may definitely not look exactly the same. I may place the vinyl design, the vinyl and everything in the same way, but how I distress it may slightly vary um, and just look just a little bit different. And that's what makes every tumbler unique. Okay, so here is the area that I wanted to show you guys and what I mean about kind of creating the tumbler to look dirty. So here you can see I'm taking that same rag where I was just stressing away at the spray paint and I'm using that same rag to um, kind of make the rest of the tumbler dirty. I'm also going to take that same rag and start distressing inside of the lines of those little areas that look like scratches. So you'll start to see here that I'm taking the acetone and just gently rubbing it inside of the areas that have scratches because scratches are not perfect and I want it to look worn and distressed, that's the reason why. Like I mentioned before, I don't like my tumblers that are distressed to look too clean. I like them to have a worn out look, especially with this specific design. And at this part of the tumbler, I'm just going back and forth, kind of looking at the tumbler and deciding where I'm going to distress, what I'm going to dirty, how I want it to look. So I'm just taking the rag now and rubbing it all around the tumbler and cleaning off certain pot spots and making some spots look dirty. So once I have that done, I'm going to spray alcohol on my rag again and kind of just gently pass all around the entire tumbler just to kind of start cleaning off a lot of that excess uh, dirtiness make sure that the resin is shiny um, and then I'm gonna go back in and start distressing those big scratch lines thing and working on this type of design does take a lot of time so keep that in mind when you are getting started with this project it is pretty tedious and you know depending on how you want your tumbler to look it can take a little bit of time and a lot of back and forth so it's kind of funny because at this part in the tumbler, I remember thinking to myself that I was pretty much done. I was just going over the tumbler, kind of cleaning it up a little bit, dirtying it up a little bit. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to distress it a little bit more. So here I'm looking at the tumbler and I'm going to go in and start distressing those big scratch lines. It just didn't match to me to keep them crisp and clean. So I'm going to add some more um, acetone to my rag and start distressing away at those big scratch lines and here is where I think that it kind of pulls everything together and I just love how this tumbler turned out and I really really love the finished look of this tumbler 
This part is a little bit tricky because you don't want to take away from the shape of the scratch lines, but you do want to distress them so that they're not so crisp looking. There's a couple of areas that I distress so that it kind of looks like it got dragged or when it was scratching. So you'll see that I'm working from within the lines of the scratches. So I'm working my way from where the glitter is on the inside and I'm distressing outward to kind of expose like a little black line. And then here you're gonna see that I decided to go in just a little bit more on the scratches. So here I'm exposing more of that black underneath and I want it to look like it kind of got dragged through and really scratched up. So you can see just how I'm kind of like pushing up and down on the spray paint to kind of get rid of that white. And I'm trying to keep the distressed look in the same pattern if that makes sense so i'm just going to be going back and forth distressing the scratch lines and then yeah you're going to see what the final look is like now that we have the tumbler fully distressed and it is how i like it i do let the tumbler sit for about half an hour before going in with my coats of resin and for this particular tumbler, I ended up going in with two final coats of resin. I used Counterculture Artist Resin for this. And I'm using two, like I said, two good coats. The first coat, um, just to kind of seal everything in. And then I do go in, do a light, light sand, and then finish it off with a final coat of resin. And then we're done. I honestly couldn't be happier with how she turned out. Just love the look of it. This was so fun to make. I'm so happy that it turned out just as I envisioned it. It's been a while since I created one of these. And so bringing back this style and working on one like this was super, super fun. So before we finish up this tutorial, I just want to take the time to thank each and every single one of you guys for following me here, for being subscribed to my channel. You guys don't know how much it means to me to have 16,000 of you guys loving and enjoying my tutorials. It means the world to me, you guys, and I'm just so blessed to have you guys here as a part of my SAS family here on YouTube. We're almost at 17,000, I can't believe it, but I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I really do hope that you guys continue to watch my videos, and as always, if you love this one, please give it a big thumbs up for me. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you can be alerted whenever we upload a brand new video. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you guys are interested in becoming a part of my Facebook family, then down below you'll find links to my Facebook group. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more social media fun. Like I said before, thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in our next video.